What's up guys, Mikkel here, and we have something very interesting to cover in this video. Is there a secret price for XRP that institutions are using to trade behind the scenes? In this video, I want to show you an extremely interesting clip that really backs up this theory. We have already been told by Ripple that there are private versions of the XRP ledger being used by the biggest banks in the entire world. In this video, I really want to dive into this and show you guys an extremely interesting interview that j we have already been told by Ripple that there are massive institutions using private versions of the XRP ledger. In this video, I really want to dive into this and give you guys some more detail on exactly what I think is going on behind the scenes. I also want to show you a very interesting update that I think went under the radar by Jeremy Hogan. He just did an interview on a different YouTube channel. I want to break down some of the most important things he said that you guys might have missed. Make sure you guys stick around for that. This is very important. Last of all, at the end of the video, I want to give you guys a segment on the state of the market. Yesterday, at the end of my video, I showed you a tweet from Sam Bankman Freed where he said that he thought the worst is over. Well, there's actually something going on behind the scenes that could cause that one last capitulation moment. At the end of this video, I want to talk about that, so make sure you guys stick around. Like always, if you guys are new to this channel or come here all the time, please take a second to hit the like and subscribe button down below. It goes such a long way in helping this channel grow, and it really does mean so much to me. If you guys are ever looking for a good place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out the link in the description below. With that said though, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. Real quick, before we get started, if you guys are looking to get six free stocks, make sure to sign up with Moomoo using the link in the description below. If you sign up and deposit only $1, you could win six free stocks. Each one could be worth up to $1,000. So make sure to check that out if you want some free stocks. So let's jump into it. And a quick reminder, today is the last day for Jeremy Hogan's prediction to come true on whether or not Judge Netburn will make a decision on whether or not the SEC can apply the attorney-client privilege to the Bill Hinman Ethereum free pass emails. We know the SEC is trying desperately to do whatever they can to not hand over these emails to Ripple. We are waiting for Judge Netburn to make a final ruling on this. Jeremy Hogan believed it would happen this week. Today is the last day that can happen. Let's see if that happens or not. I want you guys to leave your predictions down below. Leave a Y for yes if you do believe Judge Netburn will make a ruling today or an N for no, you do not think she will make a ruling. I'm pretty questionable right now. I would say I do think she makes a ruling today. Jeremy Hogan is usually right. I do not want to bet against him, but it's been taking a while. I'm starting to lose a lot of confidence. Let's see what happens, though. Hopefully we get a ruling later today. So guys, next, I need to quickly cover this because I cannot believe we are still seeing this in the cryptocurrency industry. Earlier today, Force put out an article called What is XRP? And then went on to describe in this article everything incorrect, all the different FUD points about XRP. It is absolutely insane to me that big publications like Forbes are so okay with spreading misinformation. I mean, there were points in this article that were so obviously blatantly wrong, I could not believe it. In this article, Forbes says that XRP is highly centralized and Ripple Labs controls the XRP supply. I mean, these are just blatant FUD points that are provenly not true, and I cannot believe Forbes would actually publish this. I tweeted out to the author, hey David, why do you feel the need to write on things you don't understand? There are glaring errors all over this piece of trash. Please do some research next time. There are hundreds of thousands of XRP community members who could have helped you. Overall, I give it a D minus. And guys, there were points in here that were semi-accurate. I just don't get where they get this from. I mean, time and time again, we see the same FUD points recited and recited again and ultimately proven wrong. It's like there's a website out there that these different authors go to called FUD points about XRP and then treat it like it's accurate information. It's just crazy to me that these publications continue to recite the same misinformation over and over and over again and continuously get proven wrong. Hopefully this stops at some point. I have no idea if this is some coordinated attack or they just simply don't get it. 
I would think it's a coordinated attack. I would think this comes from somewhere higher up because these things are just so dumb. It just doesn't make any sense. I wanna move on though and show you guys this because this has been one of the most interesting things for me since I started investing in XRP. We know that Ripple is partnered with some of the largest institutions in the entire world. And these institutions are partnered with Ripple because these institutions want to use XRP. Unfortunately, these large institutions have been prevented from actually buying XRP because of regulatory barriers. Because of this, these institutions have been forced to use test nets in order to practice transacting value. They know where the future is going, but they are being prevented from engaging in it. I wanna show you this clip that really sheds a lot of light on what's going on behind the scenes. This is something I found extremely interesting because we know that these private ledgers exist. We know that institutions are transacting in XRP behind the scenes. But that begs the question, is there a different price for XRP behind the scenes? When these institutions use their testnet, what is the price of XRP? Are they calculating XRP at 40 cents or are they calculating XRP with a much higher value? Listen up closely to this. I thought this was extremely interesting. 40 cents or whatever, right? So the reason it's that is because the institutions have no regulatory clarity. They, they, can't, they can't really get into it in a material way uh, because there's effectively a cloud on title. What is the uh, regulatory treatment of, of XRP? It's, it's still not, nobody knows that. Nobody knows that definitively, right? We need to come to an agreement on that as a, as, as a collective marketplace, but nobody knows what that is. So the, the price that we see right now, I mean, I don't know how to say it more plainly, that ain't the price. We have done transactions in XRP just like we do with barrels of oil, with cubic feet of gas and stuff like that, where we have priced XRP in a contract with another party for values that are far in excess of what it's ever traded for. And that's because the party on the other side wanted the XRP, <laughs> right? And we were in a position to be able to sell them material amounts of XRP. And vice versa. We've, we've received XRP uh, at values that are called off-market values. This is happening all the time. This happens in markets every day. We, we do oil and gas futures contracts and say, I'm going to sell you at this price. That person agrees. That doesn't change the market price of what oil is, right? That doesn't change the NYMEX price. That's our agreement on what we're going to value the oil on. You understand? So very interesting clip right there. For those of you who don't really understand why they would be using different prices of XRP behind the scenes, it's because they don't want to move the spot value. They do not want the spot value on the traditional markets to move. They want to keep it the same. Therefore, the very large deals going on behind the scenes, that's happening OTC. It never hits the exchanges. Think about it this way. I'm BlackRock and you're Bank of America. We want to do a deal on $50 billion worth of XRP. We want to do this deal, but we don't want to do it on an exchange because it's going to skyrocket the price. Therefore, me and you are going to do this deal. We're going to transact behind the scenes so we don't skyrocket the price. But you're not going to pay me spot value for XRP because we're making this deal. We know that XRP is a lot more valuable than the spot market thinks. That's why we're doing it behind the scenes. Therefore, these institutions are transacting in values for XRP that they believe XRP should be valued at, but they know it's not being valued at the right price on the spot exchanges right now. That's the whole reason they're not using the spot exchanges, because if they use those spot exchanges, XRP will go to the price it should be trading at. Guys, this is something we need to be paying very close attention to. This is very interesting, and all the proof points to the fact that these private exchanges, these private versions of the XRP ledger are being used heavily. They're being used by big institutions, and I doubt they are trading XRP on these private ledgers at 40 cents. 
And guys, quick plug to Linda P. Jones. She's the one who conducted this interview. Make sure to check out her website, lindapjones.com. She really does a great job. She's someone I really like to listen to, and I'm pretty sure she used to work at Goldman Sachs, so she definitely has a lot of institutional knowledge. Last of all, I was gonna play you this clip of Jeremy Hogan, but since I'm already running short on time, I'll just tell you the important things he said. In this clip, he was interviewed by Wendy O, and he said that he does not believe there is any way the Ripple SEC case is going to trial, and he believes it will for sure be finished in summary judgment. This is a pretty big development because the worst case scenario for us would be if it didn't go to summary judgment and move to trial. That could extend things by a long time. This interview by Jeremy Hogan makes me feel confident that this case will end at the latest, the very early, early part of 2023. But Jeremy Hogan also goes out of his way to also say that he believes a settlement is still the most likely outcome. This is something I've been saying for a while now. I think both Ripple and the SEC really get the best side of both of each other if a settlement does come into play. The SEC gets money, they get to claim a win, Ripple gets XRP clarity, both parties go their separate ways, and the SEC doesn't even have to expose their own agency. Anyway though, I thought it was a very good sign that Jeremy Hogan doesn't think there was any way we are going past summary judgment to trial. This is something I like to hear a lot because it at least gives us a worst case scenario that we can look to for when this case will finally end. And last of all, I had to show you this. Yesterday we saw that Sam Bankman Freed tweeted out that he thought the worst was over for this crypto downturn. Well, I think it might almost be over, but there is a couple of things kind of going on behind the scenes that doesn't look too promising. Just yesterday, Celsius actually transferred 24,000 Bitcoin to FTX. If that Bitcoin is going to be sold on FTX, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that goes on to exchanges and does affect the price. I can't imagine that would be good, but that would be the capitulation moment. If that happened, that BTC would wick down hard. We would see mass selling blood everywhere, and that would likely be it. I have no idea if this is all going to be sold, if it's going to FTX and FTX is just going to hold it. We need to see, I don't know exactly how this works, but either way, that's a lot of Bitcoin moving to an exchange, and typically when Bitcoin goes to an exchange, it means it's getting sold. Let's keep our eye on this, let's see what happens, but guys, if this does get sold and causes a big wick down in uh, Bitcoin, I'm going to be buying a lot of cryptocurrencies. To me, this is the capitulation moment. You don't get more fear than 24,000 Bitcoin being sold on an exchange. Who knows? Maybe Mt. Gox will dump at the same time. Either way, though, I think we're close. We're getting close to that capitulation moment. Let's keep our eye on it. Anyway, guys, happy Friday. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you so much for coming. Make sure to like and subscribe. And for now, Mickle out. <laughs>